I don't typically make videos exclusively for Muppets. And perhaps that's what makes today so damn special. I'm John Dogan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars! Shh. No IQ test required either, dude. That's got to be a relief, but Australia only. Website! Card! Now, not a fortnight goes by here in the Fat Cave with the former cheerleader hotties making all the big decisions, chocolate or strawberry, whipped cream or honey, things of that nature, without someone intruding on my perfect lifestyle to point out that I'm wrong about towing. Now, my long-standing position has been if you are towing a thing and that thing is heavier than the thing doing the towing, then you are getting this horribly wrong, even if it's legal. And yet, people opine all the time using the following evidence that I am wrong. They say, oh yeah, but what about the semi-trailer? The trailer's a lot heavier than the truck. QED! Whatever that means. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. I'm no IT expert, but I've seen enough, especially lately, about data breaches, scams and hacks to know that being online is inherently risky and potentially very costly. You don't have to be tech savvy to use NordVPN. It's a simple one-stop cyber security solution. One click and you are protected from hackers, malware and pop-ups across as many as six devices. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now and you'll get three to 12 months extra time on any two year subscription as part of Nord's 11th birthday celebration. Plus one more bonus month just for using the nordvpn.com slash AEJC link in the description. NordVPN is the world's fastest VPN and it only costs about as much as a cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure. NordVPN can also save you money because you can assign your virtual location to another country where, for example, flights and accommodation might be cheaper than they are back home. Same goes for streaming services. You can also access live sporting events and other content that may not be available where you actually live. That's a pretty small price to pay for cyber security, not to mention the potential savings also on the table. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now to get a huge discount off your plan plus a free 11th birthday gift and all that additional free subscription time. Totally risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. And thanks to Nord for sponsoring this episode. I've chosen today's missive to cover this one off for duos reasons. Dude. Number one, because it's more of a question and less of a gotcha. And number two, because of the preposterous fake name of our correspondent. Smooth Walrus. The thing about a fake name, obviously, is that you get to choose your own. It is entirely unlike a nickname, which is inevitably bestowed upon you by others and usually reflect some kind of terrible character defect or other idiosyncratic quirk unique to you. So, smooth walrus. I can only imagine Mr. and Mrs. Walrus standing around in neonatal walrus intensive care in fucking Norway, looking down at their pride and joy after a difficult labour, saying, I've never seen one like that before, like he's cute, but... I know. Imagine that. A baby walrus with no wrinkles. What do you think we should call him? Please. Smooth says... <coughs> oh, John, we'd love to see a video on how the ratio of vehicle weight to trailer weight differs in terms of safety for you like the GW compares to a semi. Great Wall can tow three tons allegedly, which is about a 50-50 split between Ute and trailer, whereas the semi can tow 30 tons, which is about a 25-75 split. 
without wanting to sound like an idiot, why? I suggest it's very difficult not to sound like an idiot with a signature like that at the end of a question. Smooth. And smooth, just for the record, it's entirely the wrong Christian name if your surname is Walrus. Because, and YouTube is very touchy about discussions of this nature, but the Walrus is a very anatomically specific animal when you think about it, okay? It's like the Ron Jeremy of the frigid north in terms of some David Attenboroughian documentary. Let's just put it like that. And if you can't join those dots, I'm not joining them for you. Okay, I have to do independent research. <sighs> Was Oratund Warus or Turgid Warus already taken? Perhaps by your older brothers. You know, come on. Rigid Warus, Rough Warus. Oh my FG, is that a stainless steel snorkel in your pocket or are you just glad to see me, Walrus? These are bands which I would pay to go and see perform. Smooth walrus, not so much. To answer your specific question, poorly named walrus, this happens because semi-trailers are optimised for the carriage of the trailer, whereas a ute is optimised for the carriage of people and stuff in the tray and from time to time a trailer. And when you look at them through your Isaac Newtonian glasses, they're completely different things. And if you can't see that, should have gone to Specsavers, <coughs> I'd suggest. So, the Great Wall Motors Canon X ute, okay? It's got a curb weight of 1,965 kilos. So let's call it duos tons, okay? It's got a gross vehicle mass of 3,070 kilos, but let's just call it three tons. So it's got a payload of one ton, okay? Gross combination mass, 5,555 kilos, but let's just call it five and a half. And an aggregate trailer mass, like a towing capacity, of three tons. So empty, it weighs two, Fully loaded, it weighs three, and it can tow three, but it can't tow three and be fully loaded at the same time because it's limited to 5,555 in total. Total mass of the ute plus the trailer. That's kind of how it rolls. These things are designed for periodic towing or moderate towing. You know, they're passenger vehicles, they're light vehicles, they're jacks of all trades. Whereas a semi-trailer has one function, which is to pick up a trailer and take it a really, really long way, you know? And if you're in the semi-trailering trucking business, you only get paid for delivering the payload. That's why it's called a payload, right? That's the bit you get paid for. So it's very important to optimise those vehicles to carry the maximum amount of cargo, okay? So a semi-trailer is a completely different design. And when you look at our semi-trailers here in Schittsville, they're not 18-wheelers the way they sing about in uh, James McCall and other songs in the United States. They're not 18-wheelers, they're 22. They've got... Essentially, they've got three axles at the back on the trailer, and then they've got two axles at the back of the prime mover, which carry the front bit of the trailer, and then they've got one axle at the front, which steers for a total of 22 wheels. So they've got 12 wheels down the back, four wheels on three axles equals 12, and then they've got two axles at the back of the prime mover that the front of the trailer goes down on two, so that's eight there, total of 20, and then two to steer, 22, okay? That's kind of how this works. And if you wanted to do some rough proportionality on that, that means about 60% of the load of the trailer is carried by the rear bogey right up the back of the semi-trailer. And about 40% of the load of the trailer is carried by the two axles at the back of the prime mover. That's kind of how this rolls. And it's a really efficient way of carrying heavy loads long distances. But because of the incredible difference in 
overall basic design, you can't compare a semi-trailer to your 4x4 towing your chitois to Dingo Piss Creek. You just can't do that. Number one, because the wheels on a semi-trailer are right at the ends of the box and the wheels in your chitois are right in the middle of the box. And that means your box, so to speak, is susceptible to being upset in pitch and being upset in yaw as you truck down the road to Dingo Piss Creek. Whereas the semi-trailer is, actually the trailer is very well controlled in terms of pitching and yawing because it's got wheels at each end of the box. Okay, so that's a subtle difference, isn't it? So what we've got to think about here is how does this really affect things, right? So the loads are distributed in completely different ways. The caravan has 90% of its load on the centralised axle group and it's got 10% of the load on the tow bar up the pointy end. So 90% here, 10% like that. And that's the maximum stability kind of configuration for your chitois, all right? Whereas the semi-trailer has 60% back here and 40% up here, and the 40% up here is being provided by the back end of the prime mover, which is essentially two dirty great steel beams hanging back uh, from the engine with dirty big springs on them and four dirty big load-carrying tyres on each of two axles for a total of eight, okay? It's a completely different design arrangement. And let's not forget that the tow ball, if you like, on a semi-trailer is right on the top of the bogey, if you like, above the two load carrying axles at the arse end of the prime mover. Whereas the tow ball on your 4x4 wanking chariot is a metre and a bit behind the back axle, allowing for some very undesirable rotational sort of torque multiplication events if things go horribly out of control. And they just couldn't be more different. And I, I don't know how to explain this to somebody who never paid attention at high school physics. It's just, oh yes, completely different. So let's think about if we did this to a dual cab ute, okay? You'd have to put a tow point, like a tow attachment point in a dual cab ute right on top of the rear def differential, right inside the tub or you'd have to get rid of the tray and just have a tow point right there, right on top of the differential, okay? It'd be on the chassis, but it would be geometrically on top of the centre differential if it's in the centre of the rear axle, which they usually are in vehicles of that nature. So you wouldn't really have... be kind of impractical for a few reasons, one of which is you'd lose all of your in-tray load-carrying capacity. It just wouldn't exist anymore because there wouldn't be physical space for it, right? And the tow ball download, like if you're towing a three-ton trailer, instead of 300 kilograms of tow ball download, if you did it the way a semi-trailer does it, it would be 1.2 tonnes pressing down on the rear axle. Let's not forget that the way these utes are designed, 1.2 tonnes is higher than the total payload capacity of the ute, which includes things like you and your <coughs> lovely wife, all the way to Dingo Piss Creek and your personal effects and your recovery gear, the second spare tyre for your ute, which is presumably in the ute, your obligatory awning and roof rack and other... ARB wanking club membership, you know, tokens such as a winch and a bull bar and things of that nature. So, you know, the actual payload, the things that you can lift in and lift out of your ute, are much less than the quote-unquote payload capacity of your ute because of your bull bar and the weight of the people and the weight of whatever else you decide to fit. So 1.2 tonnes is going to overload the rear axle in any current design. It's completely impractical. And you'd probably need, at the very least, a complete rejig of the platform, the suspension, the steering, and the tyres wouldn't be up to it. You'd probably need to have a dually at the rear if you were going to do it this way, like the fifth wheel sort of conversion option. 
it would be completely impractical because when you took your shitwa, when you decouple your shitwa and you leave it, you know, at, at the bank of the golden billabong when you finally get to Australian Mecca and you go for a drive, it would just be awful to drive because if a vehicle is optimised for 1,200 kilos of download on the rear axle when you remove the 1200 kilos it's going to drive like a bucket of shit it just is you'll be spearing off the road left right and center because it'll just be horrible to drive in this way kind of like a prime mover without the trailer but if you did it in this way it would be much more stable in pitch and yaw for the trailer so this opens the door to a sort of uncomfortable discussion because I so hate caravans. But what we've basically got out there on the road at the moment, and this is something I'd like to hear from you on in the comments as well if you've got some knowledge about this kind of thing because what we've got now is a system that has evolved from the 60s and 70s when caravans were tiny and people really didn't need to take it all to get away from it all, right? And what we've seen is the progressive escalation of the weights of things like caravans and camper trailers and now everybody wants to tow three and a half tons whereas when you had a tiny little camper in the 70s or the 80s or a tiny little caravan a centralized axle group was fine because that van could not really affect the vehicle doing the towing that much but now when you've got a three and a half ton van that's really just a big seesaw like this nudging and making something like a 300 series Land Cruiser look tiny, okay, you've got it nudging the front vehicle around all over the shop, all the way to Dingo Piss Creek. That's untenable. And what we really need to do is change the way we tow. We need to change the design of caravans and we need to change the design of vehicles to accommodate more effectively these fucking huge vehicles, these cockroaches that have been, you know, Bruce Bannerfied out there on the freaking road. And I don't know how we do it because every solution I can think of is not without compromise. Like you could make caravans into dog trailers with wheels at the corners and you could tow them like a dog and a tipper where your 4x4 wanking chariot is the tipper, not a tipper, and your caravan is the dog as opposed to a pig trailer right but it's very difficult to reverse a dog trailer if you're a virtuoso at it you can do amazing things but it's hard to do and there are some maneuverability kind of considerations with dog trailers and they need more maintenance they've got more moving bits etc okay i'd love to know what you think we should do because it's unlikely that we're going to outlaw three and a half ton trailers but it's very likely that the way we're towing them at the moment is not the best way of doing it. So kind of there's that. You could look at it this way as well, right? The difference between a semi-trailer and your shitwa and masturbatory chariot on the way to Dingo Piss Creek. What about, okay, what about if we did semi-trailers the way we do caravans what about if we just change that okay we could just put five axles in the middle of the trailer and have it like this and have 90 percent of the load of the trailer down in the middle and just 10 percent up the front being chugged along by a prime mover we could put a little bit of download in there for quote unquote <laughs> stability we could see how that goes we could just if we did that i'd suggest that what you'd be able to do in just a matter of days is you'd go to Coles or Bunnings or Woolworths or David Jones or any other shop, basically, and just watch the shelves empty like some dystopian movie about a pandemic or something. Because nothing would ever get to its destination. <laughs> right? If we did our semi-trailers the way we do caravans, every trip on the highway would be a deleted scene from Mad Max. There'd be interesting things to find in every table drain, I know. It'd just be like a, a remake of the 1971 Spielberg classic duel with Dennis Weaver in it. Remember that? The Peterbilt 281 tanker versus every other road user. I'd suggest if we did semi-trailers like caravans, that'd be the way society would turn out. It'll be fun to watch, I guess, but only in a parallel universe.